Good afternoon. Uh, so uh, we will tell you, uh, me and Petya Senova, I will go first, uh, she will go second. Uh, what was Parliament all about? Uh, the, the past tense doesn't mean that it's over, but the first phase uh, of Parliament um, ended uh, on the uh, 30th of May, and uh, now we can uh, tell you what we managed to achieve. The background of the whole initiative is that uh, we have this um, resource families in Clarin and parliamentary corpora are one of them. And um, Clarin was always really active in uh, supporting the activities uh, related to parliamentary data. So it all started a couple of years ago. We had Clarin traveling campus, um, two editions of it, and then uh, several workshops, sometimes they were at prominent conferences such as EREC, uh, sometimes they were organized uh, more privately, like the uh, Amersfoort uh, Pala format workshop, uh, where uh, Tomasz Ariabet, who will be speaking next, uh, presented his Pala Clarin format for representing parliamentary data, and it all converged into um, our project because uh, it, it's uh, occurred that there are many people interested in processing and analyzing parliamentary data uh, and Clarin uh, played a, a great role in that. So, uh, of course, we all had our parliamentary corpora, uh, we uh, all had uh, them encoded in our favorite way, uh, but uh, we at, some point thought that it might be great to uh, do something on the common ground with them and uh, try to uh, offer uh, a common platform for analyzing uh, parliamentary data just by uh, converting them to some common format. Uh, so uh, then the, the, the Clarin Resource family funding started. So we, uh, we thought it, we might apply for a small project it's not a, not a very small one, as you can see, 135,000 euro, and uh, try to uh, test the ideas that we had uh, for uh, quite a while. Uh, so Clary and Eric agreed, and we filed an application, they accepted it, and we started a project that uh, was uh, related, or uh, apart from uh, processing parliamentary data, it had also the current pandemic in mind, because uh, the idea was that uh, we could split our parliamentary resources into two parts, uh, the COVID part, so the part uh, starting in November 2019, when uh, the COVID issue um, uh, started being discussed uh, everywhere, and the reference part, so some data before that time, uh, and by having the same data split into two parts, we could uh, think about how we could compare them and uh, give the researchers from digital humanities uh, a great resource uh, that's on one hand multilingual, on the other hand uh, very uh, similar in nature because it deals with parliamentary data, so it's one genre. Uh, and at the, at, at the same time um, having many uh, different topics discussed because as you can imagine the parliamentary data is heterogeneous uh, homogeneous on one hand and heterogeneous on the other because everything is there, all the topics that are relevant to uh, our national parliaments. Uh, the project was organized in uh, two phases. The first phase uh, was, um, I would call it a test phase. So uh, with uh, the languages that were represented by uh, the people who uh, originated with the idea of the project, so uh, Bulgarian, Slovenian, Croatian and Polish, uh, we uh, tested the whole idea of converting our parliamentary resources into a common format devised by Tomasz. Uh, and uh, the, the second uh, phase was planned uh, to include more parliaments, more languages uh, in a form of, of mini grants that uh, were already included in this 135,000 uh, euro, uh, but uh, were offered to uh, participants in, it's in a contest-like mode so that they could apply uh, to get a small amount of money uh, for 
uh, converting their, their data um, into our format, following the guidelines that we prepared in the first phase. Uh, what's uh, really great and important here is that we plan to uh, have uh, six or eight or, or just a small couple of uh, parliaments, uh, parliamentary data from different countries added to our format and to, to the parliament infrastructure because it's not just uh, a format. Uh, what uh, Thomas created was is the whole infrastructure of SAS time sheet, correction checks and everything and documentation. Uh, we wanted, we plan to have uh, six languages and uh, 13 applicants um, um, applied for uh, for these mini grants, and we asked Clarin for more funds, and we received them. Thank you, Clarin. Uh, so uh, we uh, managed to include uh, 13 more parliaments uh, to our uh, scheme, uh, and we also had one observer from uh, Spain, and they joined with their own funds, and now we have um, many many languages in the same. Uh, representation. Uh, the main uh, entry point for uh, what we managed to achieve and all the documentation links to repositories and uh, all the useful stuff is uh, the link that you can see. So it's Clarion Content Parliament. Uh, and uh, it, it happened that uh, even before the project ended, we managed to um, attract uh, uh, the attention of many people. We wanted to advertise it. So uh, we, uh, mm, uh, there is a list of events we took part uh, in, and it's not just for uh, the record, but you, you can find many useful materials by going to these uh, events. And uh, for example, we had uh, a great uh, Digital Humanities Hackathon, and now several uh, representatives from this hackathon, uh, several uh, people who took part in it, and one representative, Magda Kolczyńska, will be uh, telling uh, us about how our data uh, could be analyzed by uh, digital uh, humanists. Uh, and uh, uh, last but not least, we have our joint paper about our work accepted at the uh, Clarin Annual Conference, which is going to happen later this year. And uh, the last one from me, because Petya will take over, is uh, what we managed to do to, um, uh, to uh, complete the project and how we were proceeding with uh, getting to the point where we are today. Uh, so apart from uh, the data, which are transcripts of what uh, has been said in our parliaments, uh, we had quite rich uh, metadata we, are, we now know that it's not enough, we want more, uh, but we already have a lot of metadata about genders, political parties, uh, and other properties of speakers that can be helpful for um, analytic purposes. And after we converted the data uh, from uh, the parliament schema, uh, we managed to validate them, and it's not just tech, but also linguistic annotation that's really helpful here. So when you have post tags or named entities, we can also do many useful things. For example, using named entities, you can compare um, um, uh, the data between languages even be, uh, without translating them. Uh, and uh, the last two points are quite obvious, but uh, that's, that's really important, is making uh, the data available uh, via concordancers and Parlometer, that's another uh, great demonstrative interface for our data. Um, apart from what you can do with the concordances, because they are linguistic, but and Parlometer shows the data in a different way, we managed to produce also some use cases in the political science and digital humanities. You will, you can, will be also uh, able to see uh, some of them today. So, thank you. And now, Petya, can you? go on with the rest of the introductory speech. Yeah, thank you. So um, just uh, very brief, um, I will uh, lead you to the other things that uh, uh, we did. Uh, so um, first, there were many challenges since the uh, parliaments in different countries are different. And so here you can see that the unicameral and bicameral parliaments and it is nice that uh, although they had their own specifics, uh, they could uh, 
I mean, uh, Tomas and uh, the teams, they managed to, to do it in the unified way. Um, so this is one of the challenges. Uh, and the next slide, we'll see more. Uh, yeah, different ways of getting the data, like uh, scraping it from parliamentary websites or obtaining uh, via um, services like Parliamentar for several languages, uh, but here Croatia is representative, or uh, retrieving um, from an already maintained parliamentary corpus because there are groups uh, that are hard working on this and they are getting all the data for their parliaments. Now downloading from a server or through a parliamentary APA um, or service centers at the parliament, you see there are different ways of getting, which is also interesting. Uh, data conversion, um, although I have two slides here, but um, all these um, things uh, we managed to generalize over them because uh, our um, participants and our partners, uh, they did a very nice technical report for their own work in parliament. Um, so uh, basically, it is very difficult to generalize because um, very often they intersect the, the steps they, they um, uh, take in order to convert data. But basically, um, we can say that there was some transformation from, uh, let's say, um, with constraints or XSLT style sheets, uh, also using scripts in different languages like Python, Perl, or Java. And the interesting thing is that uh, very often it happened, maybe we can also get the other slide also on data conversion. Uh, very often um, the groups had to um, have some manual interventions uh, post uh, this post automatic uh, processing or uh, in between or during this process. Um, so, um, yeah, this was interesting. Automatic work, but with checks, manual checks that were necessary as well. Okay, next slide. Thank you. Uh, linguistic processing, I will not get into details. Um, and uh, Tomas will um, uh, say more afterwards about the details, the, the, the substance actually of this. I just wanted to say that uh, most groups included this UD based morphosyntactic and syntactic annotation and uh, basic named entities. But uh, the uh, challenges were uh, in the things that um, different languages had different availability of tools like named entity recognition tools. Uh, the quality and performance of these tools if they were available and also how uh, were they suitable exactly to this parliamentary domain. Yeah, just a few words here. Um, we, we believe that this project establishes an innovative strategy for handling this parliamentary data, uh, but it's at emergency period, but not only in emergency period because uh, it was extended to reference corpora as well. But uh, the novelties as we see them here is the proper and unified handling of uh, cross-lingual and across parliament comparable data, and also very quick access to all uh, of all interested parties to this data through uh, good uh, web services or the data itself. And it is a good example to follow. Yeah, this is the most interesting actually, because um, uh, when we, uh, once we have such nice data, we can do many things with or without um, projects, uh, could be uh, on national level, also uh, European or Clarion level, but uh, many, many open research horizons. For example, this data could be extended as uh, parliaments, like adding new national parliaments or even beyond Europe, adding regional parliaments, um, and also incorporating Europarl or uh, other sources related to European Parliament, extending the data itself, adding um, also speech records of the debates, also videos, I mean, making it multimodal. Another interesting idea is the translation of all corpora into English uh, for enabling better comparative research um, and um, enriching the existing data with more metadata. Uh, Maciej mentioned that it's not enough, it's never enough and annotation of semantic content. Even more, uh, linking the existing data to Wikipedia, DVPedia, and other linked open data that is available. 
also uh, using these data for downstream tasks like text summarization, uh, named entity recognition and linking, semantic similarity. And uh, last but not least, it is supplying data in real use cases. And you will see some examples that follow. And uh, yeah, observations over democratic processes through um, speaker and party statistics, topic modeling, time and context on social tendencies. Okay, that's from me. Thank you.